overrated. Yeah, the overrated quarterback really? based yeah. on his pay oh, and the amount pay. of money that they gave him and him not doing anything that advances them where they thought when they got him from Washington. I would say just rate it from public sentiment. Like, every, everybody in the public this knows. It's not about what, sentiment. I know, but everybody knows what Kirk Cousins is just because they paid him. That's on them. He's a little well, overrated. You know what that is. He's a little they overrated. Paid Kirk him, he's Cousins. Overrated. Kirk Cousins flashes in a way that make people think he's better than just an average starting quarterback, but he's just an average starting quarterback. All right, that was a, that was a debate on Keyshawn J. Will and Max, which you can hear on Score North Radio in the Twin Cities AM 1500. And uh, this is Reckless Speculation Thursday here on Mackie and Judd. Reckless right. Speculation. To those who celebrate. <laughs> and it's presented, we've got some juicy stuff here from Jeremy Fowler, insider for ESPN about the Vikings. But uh, this Reckless Speculation session is presented by the Score North app, where we're giving away Winter Classic tickets, January first, Wild Blues. Today's code words. So here's what you do: you go on the you go on the app, you go to Listener Rewards, and then you can enter once every day this week with different code words. And today's code word is Dean, as in Dean Evason, as in NHL Coach of the Year to be uh, Dean Evason uh, and his facial expression. So Dean is the code word. Enter it. You'll have a chance to go to the Winter Classic, courtesy of of us here. We're in a in a generous mood. So, boys, Jeremy Fowler, who's a friend of the show, he used yeah. to be a Vikings beat writer for the Pioneer Press like ten years ago, and yeah, good guy. He's been an insider at ESPN, and uh, he's speculating on coaching and front office changes in an ESPN.com article. He's looking ahead the next few weeks, and he writes three double digit win seasons have kept Mike Zimmer in Minnesota for eight years. But the shine is starting to wear off. People close to the organization. I, I love that. People close to the organization. Mm-hmm. People hiding in the bushes outside. A janitor. Just peeking over the top. Head chef. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing uh, he's probably got sources higher up than the head chef. But I don't know. You never know. The head chef. Hey, head you got to start knows somewhere. Where. Head chef All knows a lot. All the bodies are buried, okay? Yeah. Don't discount the head chef. People close to the organization are wondering whether sweeping changes will happen this offseason. Whispers persist that Mike's hard-charging style has affected the locker room. I think that's obvious based on, uh, like, Blake Barrett's is the agent for Adam Thielen and I think multiple Vikings players, and he goes on a Twitter rant a month ago about the coaching and stuff. So, yeah, I think players are probably venting to people. That style works when you win. The defense, Long Zimmer's signature, has fallen to 26th overall in yards per play allowed, and the loss to the winless Lions might punctuate the spiral. Rick Spielman's case is complicated by his tenure. He's overseen personnel for the Vikings and the Wilfs since 2006, and the roster isn't considered bad, though the secondary has fallen flat. One idea floated from a league official. Spielman moves into a cushy senior front office role, handing over personnel to a new general manager. Wilf could respect him enough to keep him around in that senior role. Jeremy Fowler, Mm -hmm. your thoughts? Well, first of all, I think it's an interesting, to start with the Spielman angle, I think it's an interesting uh, thought process to go down. So basically what you're saying is you would do what Denver did with Elway, who, who of course is a Hall of Fame quarterback from the Broncos past, then became their GM and now has that cushy role. He's like the uh, VP of football ops or, yeah, or something, but something I mean, like it's, that. It's a title, right? George Payton now makes the decisions. He probably goes and knocks on John's door and shoots the breeze, but that's about it. Talks about the nineties and stuff. Um, yeah. You know what? That actually makes a ton of sense. Uh, and I wonder if Fowler got that from somebody who really knows what they're talking about, because I could see that. I, I mean, clearly Rick's been there since 2006. Now he got the GM job after the, the three and 13 debacle, but that speaks volumes to how the Wilfs felt about him. Then they went three and 13 and and kept Rick and promoted Rick. So I could completely see that. My one thing would be, are we sure that Rick is going to be far enough away from the decision on the coach and QB then? Because, and I would be, I would hope that the new GM would have total control of that. I really don't want Rick's hand in, in the quarterback, especially just because I don't trust him one bit. Um, but yeah, that that I hadn't given that one much thought. But I actually think that that makes as much sense or more than firing Rick because Rick has been there. And mm-hmm. and I know uh, fans 
are going to say, well, come on, if he's not going to have the GM job, just fire him. It's been, and there's, I disagree. But, yeah. But that's not really how the Wilfs work too. And this would be a way to, to take a guy who's been clearly loyal and a good employee for a long time, uh, keep him, promote him out of, out of football decision making duties and, and then bring in a young GM to, to hire the coach, potentially draft a quarterback, most importantly to, or as importantly, make a decision on Kirk for 2022 going forward. Yeah. So, yeah, I you know what? I think Jeremy Fowler probably has very good sources who are – whispering to him about what might happen. I love the whispers, man. Like he and, and he's kind of, you know, like Adam Schefter is like the godfather of ESPN's football scoops. And then they I think they still have like Ed Werder over here. And so so Jeremy Jeremy's but Jeremy's a really good reporter. Yeah. That maybe does and they also have like Diana Rossini, who Declan has just been in love with Fowler, for years. Okay, I think we're gonna Fowler, throw that. No I one think, there. I sense. Well, I mean, you, you love I am. Diana no, I am. I am. I'm not hiding from it. No, I am. I, yeah, am. I am. I'm in. I'm in love. I sense. I, I, I'm in love with uh, what's the other guy? Dan uh, Graziano. That's okay. my guy. That, yeah. yeah good. I'll take Diana. You can get Dan. <laughs> Jeremy Graziano. All all the those guys are are like if if Shefty is the it, it, the Pope. I feel like the, those guys the Cardinals. are Cardinals. Exactly yeah. right. So like they bring something, <laughs> but but Fowler, there's no question, still has sources here. So that makes sense. I could see it. And as long as Rick is out of the kitchen, I think it works. So, all right. I think people are too hard on Rick Spielman. I don't think he's perfect. I think what happens is GM makes mistakes and, you know, without context and comparing one GM's mistakes, you know, like your GM as a fan's mistakes to the mistakes that all kinds of GMs make. You just say, well, he's made mistakes. Look at the first round picks that he's whiffed on. He's garbage. He should be fired. Or, well, he's been here for this long and they haven't won a Super Bowl and therefore he should be fired. I love the way that Fowler painted this because I I don't think there's any chance in the world that the Wolves fire Rick completely, fire Zim completely, and clean house. Like, a lot of people want them to just clean it all out. They're not a two-win dumpster fire, okay? Be careful cleaning it. Now, I think the Vikings should aspire to win a Super Bowl, and they should have their sights set higher than what they've achieved in the last 10 or 15 years. But it's really risky to just clean out a bunch of good but not great people and start over. So if you can sort of... Do like a partial clean out. Rick Spielman has has done very well keeping this roster competitive at worst. And sometimes even like 2017 where the roster is, you know, one of the four or five best rosters in the NFL. And they had a backup quarterback that sat in the car and uh, and drove it to you know Philadelphia for the NFC championship game. So I like the idea of him still being involved. He, he, I mean, think about rounds like two and three through six. Like there's been a lot of involved. great hits. I, I don't need to. But involved. but Judd, you're gonna clean the whole thing out and start over like that that like you're gonna whiff oh. on somebody. You're gonna whiff on somebody. And to dismiss Rick Spielman like he's garbage and terrible yeah, at his job is is asinine. Mm, but he can't be so the fine Bill line. Bill Belichick is whiffs walking. on picks. Sure, sure. But the fine line that you're going to walk here is you cannot have him involved in the most important decisions. He well, that's why you bring some. Like you, you would bring someone else in, in coach. Well, yeah. I mean, if I'm going to have a fifth round pick, I'll go ask him. Um, here, I want him going out and giving speeches on be behalf of my team. Uh, stumping for um, the Vikings is fine, but I would rather have. If you tell me that he's going to try and sneak into the kitchen, I would rather have him gone. I just think that Fowler's probably right. The Wilfs mm -hmm. won't, um, but. To get this team where it needs to be, you need fresh sets of eyes across the board. And if Rick is there saying, you know, on 2012, we did this and it was great, I'd be like, Rick, that's fantastic. That's all, that's awesome. But I want a fresh set of eyes and a fresh voice. So let me ask you two questions here as we sort of parse apart like the pie chart of Vikings purgatory here. Mm -hmm. Let's say you, I gave you two options. And I'm not saying that these are the only two options that will be available, but just play along with me here. You could, do you think if you gave Mike Zimmer better players that he would, that, that 
let's say you say, all right, Mike, listen, man, we believe in your coaching style and your philosophies on offense and everything. We feel like Rick has failed you. If you found a better GM to give Mike Zimmer a better roster, mm-hmm. how do you think the Vikings would fare? Similarly, or do you, or do you, like, or do you think right they would take a saying, big step? Mm-hmm. No. As opposed to that, the other that, way around. Oh. As opposed to the other way around, if you said, all right, Rick, we believe in your, listen, you're not perfect, but we, we're going to keep you, Rick. We feel like Mike is holding everything back because he's stuck in the late 90s. So we're going we're gonna to keep you, Rick, and we're going to get you an offensive-minded whiz, you know, somebody that can maybe work with Kirk even more and whatever. Because mm-hmm. I actually think, I, I think both Rick and Mike have plenty of flaws that prevent the Vikings from being as good as they could over the last eight years. But I think coaching and philosophy have become a bigger problem in the last three years than roster construction. I agree completely. But here's the problem. Both of them have have flailed now enough where where I think the game has passed them both by in different ways. And so that's why I need younger people who understand things like Rick doesn't. When when I say that I don't want Rick involved in the most important decisions that involve trying to win games that's a huge problem too so i think you i think you're right on both ends and so if i kept mike no i mean mike is still going to mike wakes up resenting quarterbacks and hating offense it's in his dna that's it's who, a problem that's who he is but i mean that's what makes him mike so so like like for me to go to mike and say you gotta change your thinking mike um it's not gonna happen and, and it's not fair. He was hired because of how he is wired. And at the time, it worked out because Rick – but you have to work from the standpoint of when Rick made that hire. He did so basically acknowledging, I can't find a quarterback, so what can I do? I want to stop them. And you know what? Damn it, for a, a while, it worked out really good. So this, this is why I am not – this is a no-fault divorce. I am not in any way saying you have done a terrible job and you deserve. I am saying that this is this is the family that moves into a small house and it's a dog and mom and dad. And then they have a kid and the house gets smaller, but they love this house. And then they have a second kid and they got to move to a bigger house. They don't hate their house. They just have to upgrade. The Vikings have to upgrade. Let's look at a cross board example. Look at the Minnesota Wild from 08 to 2019 with Chuck Fletcher. Okay, a good team, not a great team. A general manager who went for it, a general manager who made big-time contract signings, and the Wild were never horrible and were never able to bottom out, but Fletcher, on one hand, was really aggressive and made trades the deadline to appease fans, to appease ownership, to get a little bit pushes here to maybe get them an extra push in the playoffs. Now, at the end of the day, you look at his body of work and you'll say, oh, well, they had eight consecutive runs in the postseason. That's pretty solid, but never to a conference final. Never, You were never able to take that next step up. So they gutted him. They bring in Paul Fenton. Fenton tries to tear things down. It turns out Paul Fenton is one of the, the worst people to ever deal with, but he had an idea in place that this isn't going to work. But under Chuck Fletcher, he built a solid roster. As much as we always love to rip the Grand Linen, and Nino and Coyle, those were good players. Those were good players, but they weren't able to rise up enough and make the make the wild an elite team. And ownership recognized that a change had to happen. So they blow out Chuck. Now Bill Guerin has his fingerprints on it. It looks like the wild are trending towards hopefully knock on wood being a cup contender for years to come. But they had to make that calculated risk that Fletcher's, we've always been good with Fletcher. Is it going to be even worse? And I think the Vikings have to have a similar conversation. Yeah. The other thing too, like the Wolves, I think have really preached stability. Like they really, you know, they... Judd talks about how they idolize the Bill Parcells era giants and they don't want to be an ownership group that just makes changes to make changes like the Jets and the Lions and the Browns have like, you know, 15 head coaches over the last 20 plus years. And so, you know, Rick has been a mainstay for 15 years. They've gone through some coaches, but Zimmer's been around for eight years. It's basically Childress for four plus and then it was they, they, they took a missed up with Frazier and then it's Zimmer. So it's like there's been some stability. But stability isn't something – I think some people think, well, if you provide stability, then that will lead to championship success. And I don't think so. Think about the most successful, stable – the franchises that really, uh, you know, that are the most stable historically in the NFL. Like the Steelers have stability. They've had three coaches in like 
40 years. Right, because they go to and win the Super Bowl every so often. It's been about been about 10 years since they've been to a Super Bowl, but they, they're, they're not just like hanging on to Bill Cowher for 15 years. No, Bill Cowher is, was regularly winning 10, 11, 9, 10, 11 games and then popping up into an AFC championship game and then going to a Super Bowl and then winning a Super Bowl. You know, the Giants lately have been kind of a train wreck, but, you know, they would have let go of Tom Coughlin if they didn't pop in 2007. You earn stability by contending on that championship level. Mm-hmm. You know, the Packers, you know, they haven't won a title in 10 years, but they're going to the NFC championship game on a regular basis, right? So you don't you don't just provide stability for the sake of providing stability. You Stability is earned through performing at a championship caliber level, in my mind, anyways. And what saved uh, Coughlin's job, what saved it was a Super Bowl championship. Like he was on the precipice of being fired by the Giants and and had a clear um, sit down, come to Jesus um, gathering with his players, ownership. And he come he came back and won a, a, a freaking championship. And so like in Zimmer's case, this was sort of going to be that year, possibly. Well, like, okay, okay, 2021 expectations internally were absolutely huge. Can you come back and win a championship? And, you know, right now, and I know guys have been hurt, but everybody has injuries right now. The answer is definitively no. And, you know, you've lost a bunch of close games, which are games in a season like this, which you 1,000% need to win. I don't care if it's bad luck, if you're not good, what the combination is. So, so, and the Wilfs are at the end of the day, frightened Phil by what we talk about a lot, which is they are frightened by that three and 13 year, you know, went a long way towards them being like, this is a disaster. This is no fun. I take my buddies to the, you know, they, they fly, I fly in from Jersey to go to the games and this is awful. And my friends don't like this team and blah, blah, blah. But that's all well and good, but at some point in time, when you've gone through what the Vikings have gone through, you have to pull the plug and say, how can we reset? And and I think it's very important to continue to point out that this team is not in necessarily, if things are done right, for a long rebuild. This team has the potential with a lot of the personnel that they have right now to be very competitive very quickly again if you do things right and i just think it's become clear you don't have the right coach for sure and the gm as well to find that coach to put the formula together to get this thing back on track which could be very quickly yeah is there any scenario for you guys at all where you'd bring mike zimmer back next year oh no. dex is there is there anything I, I, you have to get to a super bowl you literally have to run the table and get to a super bowl mm-hmm. I think I think well I think if you got to the NFC Championship game somehow yeah. I think I think they would bring him back but sure. I wouldn't I don't want to I I'm just trying to picture like what does this team this team would look totally different if like if they flip that switch somehow it would it would it would be a different universe right mm-hmm. like they would have to roll off multiple wins in a row against great teams even to to get there but that's kind of what we're talking about like you you literally have to flip a switch and find a new level that you haven't shown in years at all under Kirk Cousins and Mike Zimmer, you know. Well, I know they beat the Saints in a playoff game, but that's that's not the bar. Yeah, that's not no. the bar here. And there's no, no. You know what? I it's run its course. There's there is if if you got to a Super Bowl with Mike, I would sit down with Mike and say that was an unbelievable. You're weird still firing him if playoff you get to run. <laughs> Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you the opportunity to resign. You'll get a job. Like, if you get to a Super Bowl, you'll get a job in a second. I mean, and my guest is a head coaching job. <laughs> it's, run, it's run its course. I, but, I mean, I say that with no malicious intent. I'm not being a jerk about this. Like, how much more do we need to see that it had run its course after 2019? <laughs> By the way, ESPN is showing right now. So many Viking stuff. They're showing the uh, you know eleven games decided by eight points or less, and the uh, and I I don't have the volume up, but it, that's always painted as the Vikings are a lot better than their record indicates. Because look how many close games oh they've lost. God. It's like wait, like it's not, you you don't get to brag about losing close games. Like that's well, you're not just that's not just blind luck that you're losing those close games. So let's I, stop with that. And you also can't be, you cannot be a defensive first prided team 
and be 30th. Sorry. Doesn't yes. work that way. No. It doesn't work that way. Like, like you can't, they are hanging their hat on something that they're not good at. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, yeah. I'm just out. All right. Let's get to some old tweets exposed. Let's here. do it. Every here. single Thursday, reckless speculation Thursday and old tweets exposed. These old tweets that Declan pulls from the archives are presented by Federated Mutual Insurance Company. Oh, we might need insurance for yep. our Twitter accounts after these em- embarrassing ones here. Federated's been around for over 100 years, providing peace of mind and risk management tools and resources to business owners across the state of Minnesota. So find out how they can help your business at federatedinsurance.com. And remember, at Federated, it's our business to protect yours. All right. We got Dex. All right, we'll start off with Judd and then myself, and we'll go to Phil. But Judd and I have a couple of uh, Minnesota Wild takes I'd like to bring to the table here. General manager takes, roster takes. Let's go with Judd on January 16th, 2020. Yeah, Donato has to play. I'm with you, and if I'm Garen, I move Hartman before the deadline just to force Donato onto the ice. A playoff spot and points are not important this season. Learning about the next core group is the only goal. I will say, the second second part's accurate, but you wanted Ryan Donato to play so bad. Well, and Hartman moved. That's a great one. Billy, 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 Billy. I'm so sorry, Billy. Hartman's on his third team since you've tweeted this, and Ryan Hartman is now exploding onto the scene. So. Donato. Uh, Donato was oh, on Donato. his third team, right? Third yeah. Team. yeah. yeah. Is he, what? He's with Seattle. He's with he's, Seattle. He's with Kraken, yeah. I think he's, he's, got, he's, got, he's got five goals. He's got I five think he's goals. He's their first goal ever. I think that is First Kraken goal ever. But no, that is a great one, Dex. I lead right oh, now. Oh, man. I mean, Hartman's like, he's been like one of their he's three great. best players so far this yeah. season. It was a ridiculous take. That's awesome. <laughs> How old is Hartman? He's not that old, right? No. 26 or something? He's not. Old, yeah, I think he's twenty-seven. Yeah, he's he, he uh, came in the pride. league right away, and yeah. All right, Ooh, well, that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. Good, good job, Dex. Oh, oh, good find. Right. Well, good this find. one I have to go uh, seven years back to two thousand fourteen from me. Five more years of Charlie. Charlie. Woo. Go Coil, but really go oh, Fletcher. Oh wow, man. just lauding, just lauding the Chuck Fletcher take. Lauding the and Chuck the, Fletcher. So the contract for Charlie. Charlie. Woo. 4:05 p.m. I don't know what day of the week this was. Ooh. I wasn't drunk yet. I can't. I can't confirm that. But I. I. I think. No, I don't think I was drinking yet. No, you, you spelled and punctuated right. Shockingly. I think you were fine. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a, yeah? Who's writing that tweet? Yeah, for it you? wasn't me. <laughs> wow. I was trying to compliment Dex. I think I still lead because I did say let's trade a guy who's been recorded. You'd- yeah, he's been one of the best players on the team. I mean, Declan yeah. did go. Declan Declan praised a GM that he ripped earlier in the like in he the literally show. ripped the same GM yeah. like five minutes ago. <laughs> no, I know, I know. I'm just saying I'm gonna fall on this sword until we see the Macadac tweet and then. All right, old Macadac. After uh, Declan took his big L last week against the Lions, uh, the Vikings will blow out the Lions. What is everyone worried about? Let's go back to. Uh, Couple days for Halloween night against Cooper Rush oh, and the Cowboys. Oh no, this is completely misplaced fear. All right, first of all, if Cooper Rush plays <laughs> I love in this how game, you ask the questions and then correct the question. The well, answer. No, 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 yeah, I'm going to critique your answers. Uh, if okay, if Cooper Rush starts this game, it is a wrap before the game starts. Vikings roll if Cooper Rush starts this game. The Cowboys are waving the white flag in this game. If Cooper, Rush, this is a home game for the Vikings. The Vikings have the best pass rush in the NFL. They're going to, by the way, if Dak Prescott starts the game and he can't move, he's going to have problems. Wow. Oof. Yeah. Wow. Back to Seattle, Mackie goes. Wow. Mackie is not coming back to You know, mine was, bad. mine was bad, but you just brought a, a clip. Oh, my gosh. I had I had some people in the YouTube comments section oh. after early this week saying, you have to find that one for Mackie to get even with Dex after his Lions take. And I said, oh, okay, oh. I can find that. So the listeners actually helped me out with the little listener. tweets and on that one. I forgot that I said that. But, I was uh, I was on to the next take right a, away. A wrap. I forgot that I said that. It was a wrap if he takes the field. And- it, you know what? This is one of those situations where I was right and they failed. Okay? The Vikings right. failed you, the audience. This they is, failed the state ball of game. Minnesota. Yeah, this yes, is this is. Okay? This I is was right. Game. That game should have been a wrap because Cooper <laughs> Rush was playing. They were waving the white flag, and you refused to walk through the door. Shame on the Vikings. Mm. I'm going to recuse myself from this trial, and it's going to be a jury of one. Declan, who wins? Because mine's terrible, but that's... 
That's bad. That's I'll bad take the too. L here. Yeah, I'll take Phil the L here. here. I'll take okay, the L here. Okay, because when are you guys going to admit that you were wrong? I pretty much every day. Yeah, Ryan Hartman. <laughs> it's exposed. I wanted him just given away. <laughs> My God. Oh man! Speaking of Ryan Hartman, you can watch him at the Winter Classic on right. January first at Target Field. So we're giving away Winter Classic tickets through the Score North app. You just have to enter, and you can enter up to five times this week. One, there's a new promo code every day to enter in the listener reward section. Dean is the code word today. Uh, Dean, D-E-A-N, as in Dean Everson. Uh, All right. Well, Vikings, Steelers, tonight, Ventline. No, Check it out right after the game is over on the Purple Daily YouTube channel. Uh, Wild play tonight, too, don't they? 9.30, yeah. yeah. Sharp. Night start time. In, in San Joe's, yep. Okay. So got that going for us as well. All right, dudes. Uh, we'll be uh, we'll be back at it tomorrow. A little feedback Friday, and some probably some statements after a fun night of sports here, and some probably Judd Jud drink and Surly throughout the night here, depending on what happens. I don't know what you're talking about. It's, it's, it's yeah, it's only 11 a.m. as we're recording this. Judd's gonna start getting nap. Day drinking. Day drink. Pre-game nap. <laughs> Get on vent line. Start again. Tailgating time.